Hello Year 10. Before we start this lesson, I'd like you to find a nice, quiet place to study. I'd like you to get a pen and a piece of paper. And I'm going to pause this video whilst I wait for you to do that. Right, I hope you found your pen and paper and that you're all ready to study. The learning objective of this lesson is to know how to separate different types of mixtures using different separating techniques. What we're going to be hopefully be able to do is to identify the difference between a pure substance and a mixture. I want you to be able to interpret a chromatogram and to be able to identify parts of each of the mixtures. And I'd like you to be able to select the correct method of separation based on the physical properties of the mixture. Okay, first of all, what is a mixture? Well, a mixture contains different chemical elements or compounds that are not chemically bonded together. So they're just mixed together. Now in each of these boxes are, some of them are mixtures and some of them are not. So I'm going to ask you to pause this video while you write down what you think for each of the boxes. So for instance, whether you think box A is a mixture or not, so just put yes or no. I'm going to pause the video now whilst you do that. Okay, year 10. Right, so let's go through the answers. The first one, as you can see, has just got sodium chloride in there. So it is not a mixture. The second one has got the same elements, but they are mixed together. So it is a mixture. We've got chlorine and sodium. Now the C is quite obvious. That is a mixture. D has got both the same compound in there, so it is not a mixture. E, yes, it is a mixture. F, you have to look very carefully, but as you can see, there's two different compounds, so it is a mixture. G is a mixture, and H also, as you can see, two different things, so they're a mixture. Okay, so hopefully you are able to identify pure substances and mixtures because they are different. Let's look at four different separating techniques and describe how they're used. So these are the four most common. We've got filtration, evaporation, distillation and chromatography. But before we start looking at them, I just want to recap a little bit these terms. Solute, solvent or solution. So let's see if you can match the key words that you should have met at Key Stage 3 with their definition. So you can write this on a piece of paper and put the word and then put the definition that goes with it. I'm just going to pause the video while you do that. Okay, year 10. Right, let's go through them. So a solute is a solid that dissolves in the solvent, the liquid part. A solvent is the liquid that a solute can dissolve in. A solution is a solid dissolved into a liquid. When we say soluble, we mean a solid that does dissolve and insoluble is a solid that doesn't dissolve. So hopefully you got most of them right. Okay, let's start with the first separating technique. Filtration is used to separate an insoluble solid and a liquid and we use this equipment. The liquid particles are small enough to fit through the holes in the filter paper, but the solid particles are too large and they remain on the paper. We have to use a filter funnel and filter paper. Okay, 
So this is filter paper. We have to be able to fold it into the funnel and we can use that to separate an insoluble solid from a liquid. Right, we're going to pause the video again here. If I wanted to investigate how to make dirty water clean, so I've got dirt particles and water, I would use this equipment. So I would like you to put the numbers 1 to 10 and put, using the words at the bottom, the words that should go in each of the spaces. I'm going to pause the video now and we'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, right, so let's look at the answers. The pieces of equipment that we're going to use are conical flask, filter funnel, which is in the conical flask, the filter paper, which is in the filter funnel, and a beaker to pour the dirty water in. We're going to flute the filter paper and place it inside the filter funnel. Rest the funnel inside the conical flask. Pour the dirty water through the filter and the funnel and then wait. When all of the dirty water has filtered, remove the funnel and observe the clean water produced in the beaker. Hopefully we got all of that right. Okay, our next separating technique is called evaporation. So this time we're separating a soluble solid from a liquid. We're going to place the mixture in an evaporating dish and we're going to heat it until all the liquid or the solvent has evaporated. So in this case, we're not really collecting the liquid, although we can, right? What we are doing is we are collecting the solid and sometimes this technique is called crystallization. The mixture is heated to boil off some of the solvent, creating a hot saturated solution. As the solution cools, some of the solute becomes less soluble and will form crystals. Okay, here's the third separating technique. This is the method used to separate a liquid from a solution. And you can actually get both of the things from uh, the solution. This is the equipment here. Um, it's a round bottom flask with a condenser on it. So we're going to heat the mixture until the substance with the lowest boiling point evaporates and turns into a gas. The substance passes up through the top of the flask and goes down the tube through the condenser. Now at this point it is still a gas so we need it to turn back to a liquid in order to get it in the beaker. Our last separating technique is called chromatography and this separates a mixture of solutes dissolved in a solvent. So it's usually something like ink or the colouring on a sweet or colouring that you put in your cakes. We use chromatography paper and the mixture is put on the line, which always has to be above the solvent. And the solvent sort of moves through the filter paper and carries the solutes with it. So they sort of dissolve in the water and they get carried along. But because they dissolve at different amounts, they move at different speeds up the paper and they move different amounts. Chromatography can be used to separate a mixture of different inks. So here's some example questions. We've got three dots produced by three different colours. They are red, green and blue. Now if that ink, ink X, gave that particular pattern, can you see that it matches with the same height that red has traveled and the same height that blue has traveled? So if we want to identify what ink X is, it will be a mixture of red and blue. 
Okay, here's another one. Let's see if you can do this one all by yourself. Right, we've got three different inks giving three different patterns. Um, this is said, I want you to tell me while I pause the video, which ink completely matches with Z. That's right, it's ink two. Right, let's have a look at this one here, right? Here we have some artificial colorings, E numbers, and we have sweets that like Smarties with the colors of the sweets. So I want you to tell me which sweet will have only one food colouring agent. So therefore, they will only have one of the patterns for the E numbers. That's right. It's orange, right? Because orange has only got E110. Blue, because it's only got E133. And pink because it's only got E120. Right, I'm going to leave you to try and do the other three questions. So I'm going to pause the video now and I want you to start the video again when you've answered the three questions. Okay, so the sweets that contain two food colouring agents are green, yellow and violet. So green is a mixture of E104 and E133. Yellow is a mixture of E104 and E110. And violet is a mixture of E133 and E120. Now the colouring agents that are in the yellow sweet are E104 and E110, because they've got the same pattern. And the colouring agents that are in the green suite are E104 and E133. So we can interpret a chromatogram. Okay, now that we know the four ways that we separate different substances, I want you to pause the video and I want you to tell me which method we would use for each of the following. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, alcohol from a mixture of alcohol and water, right, because you've got two liquids of different boiling points, that is distillation. Magnesium hydroxide from insoluble magnesium hydroxide in water, because it's insoluble, we use filtration. Food colourings in a sweet, that's chromatography. Sand and water, well sand is insoluble, so it's filtration. Sugar and water, well because you've got a soluble substance and a liquid, you can use crystallisation or you could use distillation. Coloured inks found in a black pen, that's chromatography. And this one was a bit sneaky because we hadn't talked about it. But you would use decanting. That just means pouring off the top layer. OK, pause the video again. We're going to describe how water separated from salty water by referring to the processes happening at A and B. OK, right, so we heat the water, the water evaporates at A, passes through the condenser where it condenses back to liquid water and then the water is collected in the flask. So what temperature would be read on the thermometer? Well, that's the boiling point of water, so that would be 100 degrees Celsius. So now we're able to do all of the success criteria and I hope you've been successful in this lesson.